You may pl be pleased to know that I have a total of three slides. <laughs> uh, you'll see why in a second. Um, so I'm what the, the position that my job title is the acting chief of program and policy. Um, this was a job that was invented um, basically after George Cunningham retired nine years ago and we have been unable to hire a medical director for all of the complicated reasons that you can imagine. So somebody has to uh, sort of be around to deal with questions of you know, vision and policy and where are we going and what are we doing. Um, in addition, California also does prenatal screening, so we have that whole side of the shop as well. So that's who I am. Um, I'm supposed to. So um, we're, um, we, we skip directly to the now panic and freak out stage. <laughs> uh, so uh, this, in this just passed legislative session, um, AB 50, 1559 was passed um, by the Assembly and Senate and signed in by the governor at the end of September. Um, it requires us to add ALD screening to the state newborn screening program when it's added to the RUSP. And that's really the only condition in the law. Um, there's, as, as it says there, there's no grace period. So once it's on the RUSP, we're, we need to be starting screening um, soon, um, like within the month. Um, so, um, um, right, <laughs> as, they, as, we, as I think everybody in the room knows that um, I think that ALD will be added to the RUSP and it's just a question of timing. Um, fortunately, uh, well, and so we've started to look in at the laboratory testing options and, um, and we have an, an in-house limb system so um, that actually it's the same computer system that coordinates data all the way through the initial results, the mailers, the short-term follow-up, and the long-term follow-up that we do. And so the programming changes are, that the programming changes to the computer system are actually the, the um, as they say, long pole in the tent. Um, but um, I, will, I will say that, you know, I, I, I suspect that there are people in the room who are unhappy about the added to the rust condition. Um, I will say that it has actually made the implementation in California much easier because once the legislation was passed that we are going to be adding to it, adding it, um, the legislature agreed to our, what we call budget change proposal that <laughs> if we're going to do this, we actually need the money to do it with. And so we have these development funds now so that we can do this when the time comes. And, um, you know, I, 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 I mean, I think everybody who works for the state government is aware that in some cases, it's really money that comes down to the bottom. I mean, it's really money that, that allows us to do things or per forbids us from doing things. Um, at one point in the past, um, the legislation to add testing was passed and they didn't give us any money to do it with. So we said, hmm, nope, <laughs> we, we can't, we can't, we just, no. And it, it took another, a, a whole year for them to say, well, okay, then here's some money. Um, so, um, so that's, as I say, that's, it was three slides, that's me. Um, but um, we're, we, I, think this, I think this will actually go very smoothly. At least I hope so. Although Joe's talk this morning terrified me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? How are you planning for the clinical follow-up? It's, we're not far enough along. Um, we, we do have um, people in, California is a big state, so we have, um, we have resources. Um, there's folks at Stanford who have been um, 
looking at the neurologist, you know, the neurologists at Stanford, um, there, and we have, uh, of course, we have ongoing relationships with our endocrinologists, and, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, all of that has to all fall into place. Can you just tell the group here kind of how your program is set up because it's a little bit of a different model than both Jersey, New York, and Massachusetts and some of the other states? Oh, yeah. So because California is so big, we, um, the, the testing is done at um, now five regional labs. We used to have eight and then seven and now it's five. Um, uh, so the, 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 the specimens are collected in the various birthing facilities and sent to the appropriate regional hospital where the, uh, and we'll call it the initial testing is done. Um, we do second tier testing for um, CF and CAH and the second tier testing for C CF is sequencing and that's done at Stanford and the second tier testing for CAH is in our central laboratory. Um, after all of the basic stuff is done, uh, the specimens are all shipped to the central laboratory for skid testing. Um, and that has to do with the fact that there's no FDA approved kit for skid testing. So that testing all has to be done in the central laboratory as a kind of laboratory yeah. developed test. Um, and then um, the, the positive results, are there are, I think, ten, nine regional, regional, what we call coordinator offices that um, call out positive results in their neighborhood and um, make sure that the, the babies get in for um, diagnostic evaluation at metabolic centers or um, endocrine centers or CF centers or, so, was that enough? It is interesting because it's a little bit of a different model in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, so will ALD be done the same way SCID is in one lab since there is no FDA approved test? Yes, that's a piece of the thing that we're, um, that's, that's on our radar. We have, um, we're hoping that the SCID kit will be approved by the FDA before we need to start ALD testing. So we'll, we've already told the regional laboratories in the recent contract round that they needed to um, build out for space for skid testing. And so that's, that's all in progress. And we're hoping that that rolls out in the spring, which would then free up that space in the central laboratory for the ALD testing. It's, yeah, California is always a special case. So is it true that that's outsourced? I mean, from my understanding, just trying to help California that it's not done within the lab, but outsourced to like Perkin Elmer or? We, we have um, reagent instrument agreements with various laboratory vendors that, so I, I'm not entirely sure what your specific So question. I'm saying you don't own the equipment? No, no, so, no, so no basically we never have, no. Okay. No, so it's, um, that was a, uh, when we were, well, early on, that was an, an assessment that, um, that buying equipment, I mean, with the, with the rate at which highly technical equipment turns over was probably not cost effective and that um, renting it and buying the reagents um, seemed to, it has, has worked for us.